I'm Nancy McFadden, and I work for the governor. My job in the office is to keep things moving in the office, and that's my job today, to keep things moving. So we want to get to that thing called a bill signing. So let's just say today, California leads on equal pay, and it's about time. To begin, I want to ask Tony Thurmond, Assemblyman from this district, we're in his district, and a man who believes in equal pay. Tony? Thank you, Nancy. Put your hands together for Nancy McFadden, everybody. Welcome to Richmond. Are you ready for a great day? Let me hear you say, yeah. Are you ready for a great day on Fair Pay Act? Let me hear you say, oh yeah. oh yeah. Fantastic. It's an honor to welcome you all to my home, Richmond. Welcome Governor Brown, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, our author, our Senate President Pro Tem, Kevin DeLeon, and all my colleagues from the Assembly and Senate who are here, all the distinguished guests. Our mayor of Richmond is here, uh, Tom Butt. This is his house, so you know we got to give some shout outs to the mayor. Where's Mayor Butt is here? Thank you. To all of our special guests, friends, and visitors. It is very fitting that our program would be here today because of the history that Richmond has with our Rosie the Riveter Museum, which has memorialized the great accomplishments and hard work of women who served their country and worked hard for their country during wartime. You know the history that those same Rosies some of who may be in this room today have worked so hard and earned so much less than men would earn. Sadly, that is still in our present day conversation, that women would earn less than men. That changes today with the Fair Pay Act. And thank you, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, for making that possible. No longer will there would be any opportunity for a woman to earn less than a man who does substantially similar work. No longer will we hear that someone asking about being paid for what they should be paid would be disciplined. I can tell you, as someone who was raised by a single woman, my cousin who raised me, who often had to work more than one job to make ends meet, that this bill does matter. There are still many women in this community who are doing the same thing, working more than one job, and even if they're in a family, we know that every single dollar counts, and that's why today's signing is very important. And I want to thank the Senator again for her leadership on this issue. I want to thank the Governor for knowing a woman's worth to sign this bill into law and making it happen, and thank you for your leadership. And as a father of two daughters who I often tell to dream and aspire to anything that you can achieve and you can earn it and you can get it, I want to thank you for being part of this movement and for doing it right here in the 15th District and in our home, the City of Richmond. Enjoy the day. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Tony Thurman. Now I'd like to ask to the stage the woman who authored the California Fair Pay Act, and got it through both houses of, of the legislature with unanimous votes in the Senate and almost unanimous votes in the Assembly. Our, our uh, woman of the day amongst many women of the day, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. Well, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today. Um, the, the trip up actually was a little bit of an example, symbolic of the journey that we have had to go through for so many decades. Uh, our car broke down. And uh, fortunately, the CHP was right there. And uh, shout out to them, and a shout out to all of you uh, for being here. This is uh, an extraordinary, extraordinary day. Uh, I'm Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. Not only am I honored to represent the 19th State Senate District, but I am also honored to be the chair of the Legislative Women's Caucus.
So Assemblymember Thurmond actually gave my whole speech. Um, I only have one daughter, uh, not two, but I see the young people who are out here today, both boys and girls. I see women my age who started this battle before we had gray hair or the necessaries to cover it over. Um, this is, this is a, a, a truly momentous day. It's momentous for women, it's momentous for our state, for our economy, and for the families of California. It is also momentous for the rest of the nation because in a few moments, our governor, Governor Brown, is gonna sign the strongest equal pay law in our nation's history. And it is my hope that the other 49 states will take heed, will take a look at what we're doing here and use it as a template to ensure greater wage equality for the women of their states and their families and their economies as well. Now, it's fitting that we're here in the Rosie the Riveter National Historic Park, a place that has honored and respected women's work. And as I look at the true pictures of Rosie and those muscles, I got a lot of work to do. But uh, many of us have been trying for decades to make sure that our society and our employers honor women's work as well. But many things have changed since women began flooding the workplace during World War II, calling the heat to take over jobs where that had become vacant because we were at war. Women working in factories, in shipyards, and in service jobs during a wartime labor shortage, but then called back to the home at the end of the war. Well, the world has changed. Our roles as women have changed. We now make up half of the American workforce, and our incomes are important to our families more so than ever before. Indeed, right here in California, California families today, women are either breadwinners, either the primary or sole breadwinner, or provide critically important incomes for their families. That's in two-thirds of California's households. And yet, women's work remains stubbornly undervalued, plagued by a wage gap that has budged very, very little in recent years, even in what we think of as an enlightened age. In fact, in 2013, a woman in California working full-time made a median of 84 cents to every dollar a man made. And for women of color, the number is far worse. Indeed, for African-American women, it's 64 cents to every dollar. And for Latinas, it's 40 four cents for every dollar. This is the worst Latino wage gap in the nation. We must do something about this because this is money that isn't flowing into women's pocketbooks, it isn't helping our families, or flowing into our businesses or the economy. Today, with the signing of this bill, SB 358, we take a significant step towards making California stronger. I want to thank the governor for his support and getting us to this day. Women need the support of men too. I always say, you know, women hold up half the sky, and so do men. And together, working together, recognizing the importance of the contribution women make to our society and our economy is critically important. So I want to thank the governor. I want to thank the president pro tem of the state senate. I want to thank all the men who are here today who have been working side by side with us to make this happen. I want to thank Assemblymember Thurmond for his leadership, the mayor. This is something we all must come together to do because it makes for a stronger California a stronger state, a stronger nation. I also want to thank, and I would be very remiss if I didn't give a major shout out to the grassroots supporters of this bill, and especially our three sponsors, the Equal Rights Advocates, California Employment Lawyers Association, and the Legal Aid Society Employment Law Center. We could not have done this without you and so many others who are in this room today. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your effort. So today, as we're about to have the governor sign this, we take a major step 
in creating the strongest equal pay law in the company. We stand, though, on the shoulders of the women who have preceded us. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank those women who are about my age here, who've been working on this issue for a long time, for those who are not here to witness this event today, but are, who are with us in spirit. I also want to uh, give a shout out uh, to the governor um, for something he did many years ago. In fact, I've been working on this bill since the 70s after the same governor had appointed me to the California Commission on the Status of Women back when my hair wasn't gray and he had hair. <laughs> but all of us who have worked on this issue in legislation, we didn't do this just for us. We did this for the millions of women whose economic well-being depends on fair pay. And we also did this for the thousands of young women and girls whose future lie ahead of them and ahead of us. And that some of them are here today. I know for them, they just want to know if there's any food at the end of this. But this is for you. This is for all of us. So today, we take a step ensuring a better future for them, a future where their work and contributions are equally rewarded with paychecks that once and for all reflect our unique contributions, our equal value, and our hard work. This measure is about fairness, economic opportunity. It's about creating an equally secure future for all Californians. And as been pointed out, it's about time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hannah Beth. Now, uh, I want to uh, acknowledge some women in the audience who uh, stood up for their country and uh, didn't ask questions about equal pay, just as one of you said, we just did what we had to do. And they are our real life Rosie R the Riveters right here in the front row. Thank you so much for being here. And a number of you mentioned to me that you've been to the White House, but not to the state capitol. And these people in this front row, the governor and the Senate president pro tem and the senator and the assembly members that are here and I are going to make sure we change that in the next couple of months. Now it's my pleasure to ask to the stage uh, the man who made sure that this bill was passed with a unanimous vote, because that's how he does things. Our Senate President Pro Tem, Kevin DeLeon. Good morning to each and every one of you. First, I want to congratulate Senator HBJ and that would be Senator Hannabeth Jackson for spearheading this very important piece of legislation into law. With Senate Bill 359, the Fair Pay Act, uh, Fair pay Act California is again leading the way on policy with the toughest pay equity law in the entire nation. California's women demand and deserve fair pay for equal work. Now, I want you to imagine the frustration of a single mother struggling to provide for her family while knowing that a man is making significantly more than her for doing the same or comparable work. Senator Hannah Jackson's bill puts California in the forefront of closing this gender gap. But as we all know, we have much more work to do. She cited a couple of statistics that are very critical and very important because they're very shocking. Again, in 2015, these are figures for the state of California. Women make 84% of what men make in the state of California. In People, women of color, but especially Latinas. Latinas make 44% on the dollar comparable to what men do in the state of California. This is the worst Latina gender gap in the entire nation. And I would know, because I being the youngest child of a single immigrant mother with a third grade education, I know what it takes because I've witnessed the value of hard work in a single mother working day in and day out to put the roof, to pay the rent over my head, to put the clothes on my back as well as to put the food on the table. 
That's why when I see women, especially single mothers, single mothers who struggle every single day like Tony Thurman's mother, our parents and family did, I know what the struggle is like. So what you have done, HBJ, is quite incredible. You have really pushed this to the forefront to, again, plant the public policy flag for the rest of the nation to follow. These are dollars, these are dollars that we lose, roughly about $33 billion on an annual basis that women are losing out of their pocket that they can otherwise invest into the economy by purchasing goods. This is our reality, money that is taken away from women. So thank you, Senator Jackson, for authoring this very important bill that will bring justice and equality to hardworking women in the state of California. I'm looking at Rosie the Riveter here. It kind of looks like Rosa, Rosa the Riveter right here. <laughs> Governor Jerry Brown, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for signing this law and providing once again why California leads not just the nation, but the entire world when it comes to dealing with the inequities, the inequities and the inequalities that all women, that all individuals, irrespective of who they are and where they come from, face, struggle, and suffer day in and day out. Again, Senator HBJ, thank you for leading the way in the California State Senate, planting our flag and moving forward for all women in the state of California. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Now, each and every one of you were invited to this bill signing because you've played a role in bringing us to this day and seeing equal pay here in California. And those of you who brought your young girls and baby girls, thank you, because this is about them. But we're going to ask to the stage now somebody who Senator Jackson mentioned, one of the sponsors of the bill. And we've asked Noreen Farrell to join us here and to say a few words, partly because she was a sponsor of the bill, but mostly because a number of you in the audience said, could Noreen speak for us? So Noreen Farrell, please. I don't want to speak for you. I want you to speak for us. Can we all just say we did it three times? We did it. We did it. We did it. Woo! And I'm going to keep saying it because it's so fun. We passed the strongest equal pay law in the entire country. And I really make no mistake, this is really an historic moment. Because this bill really has been decades in the making, as Senator Jackson mentioned. It's been the result of tireless work of advocates in this room, amazing pioneers in the movement. And it was really born of stories of women across the state and across the country and their families and the kids they're trying to afford to send to college. So I'm really excited to be here. Um, and I'm here representing the, the bill's other co-sponsors, the California Employment Lawyers Association, the Employment Law Center Legal Aid Society, my sisters, um, and, and advocates in the Stronger California Advocates Network, which is pushing for a comprehensive women's economic agenda, and, and, and partners like AUW. We've worked with these folks for decades on this work. And we are here to say thank you, Senator Jackson. Thank you, Governor Brown for really ensuring that California is a leader in the nation on the fight for equal pay. Thank you so much. There were 39 billion reasons to pass this bill. That's how many dollars, slightly different data now that we've got new census data, that's how many dollars women lose in California to the pay gap every year. Despite the fact that they leave, they lead 1,751,000 family households in this state. We've heard about the atrocious pay gap experienced by women of color. And did you know that if we cut the pay gap, we would cut women's poverty in half? Think about that. We would cut it in half. 
And, and this matters. It matters to our mothers that you spoke so eloquently about. It matters to the women who clean hotel, hotel rooms who are paid less than janitors who clean different parts of the same hotel. It matters to women like Eileen Rizzo, who's here with her family, who is a math educator, and she was so pivotal to passing this bill because she came up with her family driving hours to testify at every single hearing for all of us to say, I deserve the same pay as men. And I love that she's here with her daughters. I love that Jennifer Reich, ERA attorney who worked on this case, has her two daughters. I had my two daughters, and I try to explain them to them today about what it means to savor a moment. Um, and, and we truly are here standing on the shoulders of pioneers in this movement, and I want to thank them and applaud them again. We would not get this bill passed. We would not be where we are in the women's movement without all of you, so thank you. Yeah, give it up. Give it up again and again. Listen, listen, we're not done. We're going to be pushing next year the strongest women's economic agenda in the country, and we'll be back. But really, this is a moment to savor. It's a moment for us to savor across generations. It's a moment for us to savor across sexes, across industries. And I thank industry leaders like Salesforce who are here and really pushing pay equity in their industries. It's a moment for us to savor across pil uh, by, uh, political parties because this bill received bipartisan support. I want to savor it because today we can say because the California Fair Pay, Fair Pay Act was signed today, women will be paid the value of the work in this state. And as Senator Jackson said, it's about fairness, it's about goodness, and really, really, it's about time. Thank you. Thank you, Noreen. Now, I know my boss, and I know my boss doesn't like introductions. Governor Brown. Thank you. I think everything that could be said has been said, but that doesn't stop me from saying it again. This is really a big day, important. The inequities that have plagued our state and have uh, burdened women for forever are slowly being uh, resolved with this kind of uh, bill. And by the way, it's not over yet. There will be litigation, there will be new bills, there will be new experiences, there will be new executives uh, pushing ahead in the businesses and factories uh, and offices all over California. I was thinking as I looked at all these uh, Rosie the Riveter pictures and the video on World War II, that was the time, because we had a big challenge, we really came together and got something done. In fact, the number of ships, I think of the 700 some odd ships uh, made in a few years, we probably couldn't make one ship in 10 years if we tried because we have a lot of fragmentation, a lot of cross purposes. But this is a bill and this is an occasion where we have come together, both parties, men and women, to achieve a, a very clear goal, and that is reaching toward greater equity. We're all in it together, and the stratification and the pay disparities in California and America, probably in, in the world, uh, are something that really eats away at our whole society. So I'm very proud to be able to sign this bill. And I will mention, since people are looking back, and that's what you do as you get older, I must say. When you're, one period you're looking ahead and the other one you're looking back. Uh, <clears throat> but looking back to 1982, one of the bills that I was able to sign was a bill uh, on comparable worth. And that was a study that we actually studied this concept of comparable worth, which this bill really embodies. So that was 1982, here we are 2015. Uh, we don't do this kind of social reform and advance like we made those ships. It takes a little longer, but we're getting it done. And this is a, a very important uh, milestone, and the energy that I sense in this room hopefully can continue and magnify and, and amplify all our efforts in the years to come. So thanks. Let's get the bill up here and sign it. Okay, so I'm going to call Senator Jackson, Senator DeLeon, Senator Lois Wolk, who is with us, Assemblymember Patty Lopez, who is with us, Assemblymember Nora Campos, Assemblymember Susan Bonilla, 
Former Assembly members, both Nancy Skinner and Betsy Butler, please join us. And we'd like to ask all of the girls in the audience, and all of the young girls, should I say, we'd love for you to be up on the stage. OK. Team, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, we've got somebody who wanted to give you. Come on, you guys go up in front. Okay, here. Okay. Everybody in the picture? Yeah. Come on, honey. Why don't you come over here? You want to come over here? Oh, up here, right by the poster. <laughs> 